I'd like to thank our reader, Nancy Wirtz, for the fabulous reading, and Donna Michael and our CSL music team for the great music today. We're beginning our new October series, Fall Into the All, where we learn how to relax into the arms of the divine so that we can be renewed. And our message today has the same title, Fall Into the All. It's officially fall, evidenced by the days getting shorter. And in many places, not yet Baton Rouge, the leaves are falling from the trees. It's interesting how trees don't try to cling to their leaves. They readily release them and make room for a season of reflection and then something new, spring. If we want to truly relax into the arms of the divine and to embrace all of our divine inheritance, we might consider being more like the trees and not clinging to those things that no longer serve us so that we can make room for something new and wonderful. So your question for the week is this, what is the one choice that you can make today to release what needs to be released so you can fully relax into the arms of the divine and be renewed. One more time. What is the one choice that you can make today to release what needs to be released so you can fully relax into the arms of the divine and be renewed? You know, as humans, most of us don't readily release the things that no longer serve us. We are not so much like the trees, ready to let the leaves fall. Yet what I know to be the truth is that we have to release the old to make room for the new. You've all heard the phrase, out with the old, in with the new. It starts with out with the old. So is there anything weighing you down that you need to complete or need to let go of. The message today is about making space for new habits, new ideas, new goals. And that requires us to examine what it is we have that's cluttering our space or our minds or our hearts and what we're clinging to, like old ideas or beliefs and old stuff. We cannot truly relax into the arms of the divine and it, as long as we are still clinging to useless things, old resentments, old traumas, old ways of doing and being that no longer are in our best interest. An old farmer had plowed around this big rock for years, it was in one of his many fields. He had even broken a number of plowshares and a cultivator on it. And he had grown rather morbid about the rock. It was always in his way. When he broke another plowshare on it one day, he remembered all the trouble that the rock had cost him through the years. So he finally decided to do something about it. And when he put a crowbar underneath the rock, he was surprised to discover that it was only about six inches thick. He even discovered he could break it up really easily with a hammer. As he was carrying the pieces away, he had a smile because he remembered all the trouble that that rock had caused him over the years and how easy it would have been if he had just gotten rid of it sooner. So where are your rocks? Where have you found workarounds rather than truly examining the things that you might be better off letting go of, breaking down and releasing? Sometimes we cling so tightly to things and continue with our old behaviors for years that it becomes a habit. 
And sometimes it's out of avoidance or indifference, sometimes even out of history. We all know that story about the grandchild who asked her grandmother why she was cutting off the end of the ham. And she said, well, because my mother and my grandmother did it. The truth is the pots back then were smaller. The hams wouldn't fit in the pots if you didn't cut the end off. And yet tradition had made it so that even though we have bigger pots now, she was still cutting off the end of the ham. Sometimes preserving history and traditions are useful. And sometimes they don't make any sense at all. It's a lot like that man with the plow and the rock. We do things without consciously making choices. Take a look in your closet. Is yours so full that you have to issue an avalanche warning if you want to pull out a top or a pair of pants? Have you seriously thought that you better not buy anything else because it, there's no room in your closet to put it? If you have a closet full of old clothes or a shed full of unused fishing gear or unused gardening tools or a shelf that's packed with old books that you're never gonna read again, or a brain that's cluttered with incomplete agreements, broken promises, past resentments, unresolved emotional trauma, it's pretty hard to make space for something new. If you're wondering what cleaning and clearing yourself on all levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, and socially, has to do with falling into the all, let me tell you that the answer is plenty. If you truly want to be able to relax in the arms of the divine and listen to what's next in your life, new friends or a new career, new knowledge, a new car, or a new relationship, even new attitude and new energy for life, you must clear out the old and make room for the new on all levels. You have to take the example of the trees in the fall and allow your own leaves and the old stuff to fall away and be left behind. If your mind and your heart and the bookshelves of your life are full, it's impossible to have room for the new things that the future might bring. Think about it, if you wanna make new friends, but you have a schedule that's so busy that you don't have time to make new friends, it's not gonna happen. And if you want a new romance, but you're still thinking about or angry about a former relationship, your behaviors most likely won't invite someone into your life so that you can have a new romance. I'm curious if you've ever walked down the street or into a store, into a convention or a restaurant and seen somebody that you had unresolved issues with. Something incomplete. Somebody that you had history with. Perhaps you even went out of your way to avoid them. It doesn't matter what the issue is, whether you owe them money or they owe you money or you had a disagreement about something. When you avoid connecting with another person, it's just an example of something incomplete that control your life. Incompletes weigh us down. Every incomplete thing in your life, whether it be a broken promise or agreement, a personal relationship with unstated resentments or appreciations, forgiveness that needs to occur. Everything that clutters your mind weakens your focus and it draws you away from what's most important to you. It keeps you from relaxing into the arms of the divine and that keeps you from being all that you can be. It is true that to embrace the future, you have to let go of the past. There's a story in the Bible about Lot and his family. 
and they lived in Sodom and it was being destroyed. And God told Lot to take his family and leave, but not to look back. Well, Lot's wife disobeyed and she was turned into a pillar of salt. The story is a metaphor. Salt is a preservative. When we clutch at the old and want to keep looking back in our lives, we become petrified. We can't preserve the past. We have to release it for a fresh new future. I love what Alan Cohen in A Deep Breath of Life writes. When we hold on to anger, hurt, or resentment, we only hurt ourselves. By withholding love from another, we deny it to ourselves. If you keep someone in prison with your thoughts, you have to sit at their jail door to keep them from escaping and thus become a prisoner yourself. To free another is to free yourself. When you give the gift of release, your spirit is healed. Do you wanna become a prisoner? Or would you rather give the gift of release and heal your spirit? I know my answer. Are you becoming petrified like Lot's wife from the grudges that you're still clinging to? From looking into the past and hanging on to it, not willing to move forward? If you have something that's weighing you down, it's time to release it. It's time to complete it. If you don't, you might as well be living your life chained to a lamppost on a curb and knowing that when the crosswalk says you can walk, you can't go anywhere. You can't move forward. So here's the practical part of the message. How many things do you need to complete? Some things are easier to take care of than others because they're less emotionally impacting. You might have unpaid debts or a disorganized house or office or garage. You might have an overflowing junk drawer or family pictures that you've been wanting to put into an album. And some incompletes are more difficult. Those incomplete personal relationships making amends for those promises that were not kept. Hurtful things that you said or did to someone which linger between you or hurtful things that they said to you that you haven't let go of, people you have not yet forgiven. I'm inviting you this week to start completing your incompletes. Whatever's on your list, Whatever might be holding you back, take care of it and do it now. If you continue to put it off, it continues to hold you back because it's leaving negativity at some level in your life. Releasing past hurts and anger and resentment and fear supports you in succeeding faster and easier in being able to have a clear mind so that you can listen to what is next in store for you. And here's some practical ways that you can complete those incompletes. Use, Use the four Ds. Do it, delegate it, defer it, or delete it. Do it. It may feel great to just do it. And I'd say if it takes less than 15 minutes, do it immediately. If it takes longer, create a plan to get it done and put that plan on your schedule. Delegate it. You know, some things sometimes don't feel like they're a good use of our time. And we can delegate it to someone else. You know, one of our songs today was Join Together in Love. Find somebody that loves you that will help. 
you can defer it. So if you still want to take care of it, but it's clear that it's going to take longer than you want to devote to it right now, defer it to some time in the future. But do put it on your to-do list for when you think you will have time to do it. Once the task is on your list, take it out of your mind and you have a plan so you can relax. And finally, delete it. Some things have been on our to-do list for so long that they're no longer pertinent. Just delete it. Maybe it doesn't really have to be done, or maybe it wasn't as important as you thought it was, or maybe it was a should, and you've gone past the stage of shoulding on yourself. So sometimes getting rid of that stuff makes life simpler. And deleting can be freeing in addition to an excellent clearing process. For example, if you dumped all of that old fishing gear or gardening tools that you haven't used in years, would you really miss them? How about those old resentments that keep you stuck in the past? Do they really matter today? And if they do, how can you clean it up? You truly don't have to connect with somebody to forgive them and move on. So decide now. Make what you think is the right choice about those incompletes in your life. I like to say that the heart of the matter is that hearts matter. It's truly what's inside of us that matters. Completing those things that are keeping you stuck in the past is an opportunity to look at what is inside of you to see what it is that you're hanging on to that perhaps it's time to release. As the song right before the message said, if we can release them, guess what? Then we can shine. Think about all those unfinished things in your life that impact you, that dim your light. In our philosophy, we embrace non-judgment and acceptance. And we like to believe that people are doing the best they know how with the knowledge that they have at that moment. And if that's the truth, it's essential that we apply that same acceptance to our own baggage. Have you ever thought about what life might be like if you truly released all of the past so that it had no power over you whatsoever? If you truly cleaned up all those old grudges and let go of any guilt that you had about your past actions. Think about that for a minute. What if they just magically disappeared? I believe in divine order. I believe that everything I've ever done was part of that divine order. And anything that's already taken place had a purpose. Even if that purpose was me learning from that mistake or a lesson for me to learn about how to behave differently in the future. And by the way, who do you think you're really hurting when you hang on to those grudges? It's not the other person. It's actually we're hurting ourselves. That other person might not even know we're holding on to a grudge. Has that ever happened to you that you apologize to somebody and they say, what are you talking about? They weren't even aware of something that you were feeling guilty about or some grudge you were holding. Jack and Cornelia Addington in Your Needs Met wrote these powerful words which summarize what I've been saying quite precisely. Here's the quote. Know that right this moment, all of the past is released. It has no power over you. Recognize the mistakes of the past for what they were. Efforts to do the best you knew at the moment. All of the slights of the past, 
times when you seem to have been rejected are now released and forgiven. If there was anyone else involved, know that they too were doing the best that they knew at the moment. The past is released. Tomorrow will have within it all that is necessary for the fullness of that day. I love that quote and the definitiveness of the past is released. And I particularly like the compassion in that final statement. Tomorrow will have within it all that is necessary for the fullness of the day. If we want our tomorrow to have all of that fullness in it, and if we really want to be able to fall into the all, to rest and relax in the arms of the divine, then it's time to let everything from the past be released and forgiven. Decide to do, delegate, defer, or delete it. All of that baggage that you've been carrying with you so that the fullness of tomorrow can show up. In other words, release what you need to release so you can fully relax in the arms of the divine and be renewed. And just in case you got bogged down in that releasing process sometime during the week, I'm going to end with these words of Edwin Game from her Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. One great tool is to learn how to say the word oops again. When you watch a baby learn to walk, she'll take a few steps and then fall. When she does, you don't look at her and say, look, you failed, you ignorant thing. Just stay down there and don't try again. Yet, this is what we often say to ourselves. It's so much gentler and more empowering thing to learn to say, oops, that didn't work. Oh well, I'll just have to try again. So in summary, how might you release what needs to be released so that you can truly fall into the all? Remember, be like the trees. Let go of what no longer serves you. And quit plowing around your rocks. Break them up and get rid of them. Complete your incompletes. Face your clutters. Don't allow looking back to petrify you. Let it go. Use the four Ds. Do it, de delegate it, defer it, or delete it. Decide now to make the choices about those matters of the heart that have you stuck. And learn to say, oops, and try again. So the affirmation for the week is this. How is it I so easily and willingly make the choice today to release what needs to be released so I can fully relax into the arms of the divine and be renewed? And I invite you to challenge yourself this week to remember to release whatever it is that's asking to be released. Take the example of the trees and let the things that are dying in you fall away. And I invite you to check in a couple times a day. Just see how you're doing. See if there's anything that you're holding on to that might be impacting your feeling truly joyful. Let's pray. Hmm, so we take a deep nourishing breath and we just allow ourselves to rest in the arms of the divine, to know that place within us where 
love and joy and peace and ease exist. And we know that all of that is part of who we are, part of that one life that's God's life, that's each of our lives right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that each of us this week is truly looking at all the things in our lives that we might be hanging on to that we could possibly release to make room for the new, out with the old, in with that new and renewed life that brings so much joy and happiness and peace. Hmm. So I am grateful. I'm grateful for this community. I'm grateful for this opportunity to fall into the all of the love that this community has to offer. Hmm. And it's from that gratitude that I just release this into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that that heart of the divine has already called everything that we've requested done. It's all good. It's already done. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody that continues to support us and for the generous contributions that were made last week at our in-service, in-person at Unity of Baton Rouge, celebrating our 10 years. And I appreciate your continued donations. Enjoy our offertory song. <laughs> 